We're reading about the paralytic man of Capernaum. Out of these nine verses, there's two words that are most important in this entire thing to me. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The two words that I want to focus on tonight is their faith. Read this scripture a hundred times. And it wasn't until recently that I saw those words. Always read your faith. It says right there, their faith. What does that say to us? Their faith. There's another place in the Bible where it talks about a group of people's faith. That's in Mark chapter 6. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Our lack of faith can stop miracles from happening, then our faith can cause miracles to happen. A lot of people today will say, oh, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. You're right, you don't. You can serve God without coming to church, but we need each other. Our faith is essential for each other because we can see the things that can happen in our lives, the, the miracles that can happen in our lives when our faith is combined. I wonder what type of uh, prodigals would come home when we all began to get together and began to believe with our faith, believe that they would come back. I wonder what type of changes could happen in our city when together we come with our faith and we believe that these things are going to change. I wonder to what type of miracles could happen in our midst when we begin to believe. I've been in rooms where men have gotten out of wheelchairs because the group of people that were praying for them believed. Do a physical miracle in somebody's life because of the belief that was in the room, because of the faith that was in the room, because of the faith that was in the believers. And guys, I need it right now. I need it right now. I'm desperate for it right now. Many of you guys know December 15th, probably the worst day of my life. I pick up my mom from a routine doctor's appointment. She says, they said I have cancer. Your whole world just, what? No. That's, an, what? You can't think. And then you start to pray. Oh, oh God, please don't let it be that. Please don't let it be that. And they come, the, the confirmation comes back. It is. And not only that, it's stage four. Doctor sitting across from you saying, yeah, you got about six months without treatment, maybe three and a half years with treatment. This is my mom, this is one of my best friends. What am I gonna do? We immediately think that the, the, the most powerful thing that we can do, which is go to, go to God and pray, is like the least thing we can do, right? It doesn't feel like that's effective. But then when you get this scripture in your heart and you see that my faith, your faith, and believing with someone for a miracle and believing to see that we're going to see something actually happen, actually change, that the diagnosis is going to be taken away, when we believe that, all of a sudden it changes everything. When we believe that that person is not too far out of God's reach, this city is not too far gone. That this nation, as far as it is, is not outside of the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. And when our faith can combine together and we can move the heart of God and say, their faith, you're healed. You're healed. I need, I need, I need your faith. Thank you.